By the end of this video, once our progress bar is to the top, we'll be able to hold down E and progress to the next level and start collecting all over again. We're going to be using Unity input system and Unity's actions and events. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll add the circle that'll appear and fill up while holding down our button. So right click on our player and go UI image and call this image load circle. Then I'm going to rename our canvas load canvas. Then I'm going to set the render mode to world space. So this follows around on our player and the camera to main camera. Then make sure your canvas is transform X and Y is set to zero and zero. And you'll see this is way too big. So if you go scale 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 in the X and Y, we'll go to our load circle and on source image, I'm going to click on this box. And then in the top, I'm going to search for knob uh, K N O B and you'll find this circle. I'm going to select the color with the color picker and just select our gem. So it's the same purple color. Cool. And then I'm going to move this up just above our player's head. And I'm going to set the load circles width and height to be 50 and 50. Cool. Now on image type, select this drop down and select filled. And now we can see there's a radial 360, which we're going to be using. With this fill amount slider, you can drag this and you'll see this circle kind of like fills in a pie chart. I'm going to do the fill origin from the top, just so it's kind of like a clock face. So I'm going to be starting at zero and then it'll be filling in all the way to a hundred. Cool. So now we're going to need a script to handle this functionality. I'm going to click on our load canvas and add a new script to this. I'm going to call this hold to load level <laughs> and then double click on this script to open it up. So first we'll add a public float and we'll call this our hold duration and I'll set this to a default of one. So this is how long you have to hold down for before your action happens. For us, that'll be loading our next level. Then we're going to want our image of our circle. So I'm going to want to go public image and I'm going to call this fill circle. And we'll want using unity engine.ui. Then we'll add a private float for our hold timer. Set this to zero and a private ball called is holding. Set this to a default of false. Cool. So now we don't need our start, but we will need our update. So in our update, we're going to say if is holding and we're going to up our hold timer by using plus equals time dot delta time. Then we're going to set our fill circle dot fill amount to equal our hold timer divided by our hold duration. Cool. Next, we'll say if our hold timer is greater than or equal to our hold duration, then we'll load our next level. So that's what happens when we are holding, but we're not currently implementing holding yet. Currently in our game, we're using Unity's input system for our movement and our jumping. We're going to create a function just like this in our script for holding. So let's go public void on hold and we'll pass in our input action dot callback context. And we'll call this context. Then we'll say if context dot started, which means we've pressed down our button, then is holding equals true. Else if context dot cancelled, then we're going to call a function to reset our holding. So let's write that function. So we'll go private void reset hold, and we'll go is holding equals false hold timer equals zero and fill circle dot fill amount equals zero. Copy this function and paste it up in our else if. And now we'll hook this up to a new input in Unity. So back in Unity, in our assets, we have our player controller input system. If we double click on this, we can see our move and jump actions. We're going to click the plus on actions and add a new one called hold. Then in this no binding, we'll click on this and on path, click the drop down, click listen. And I'm going to set this to be E. So when we hold down E, we'll go to our next level. Save this and close it off and select our player. And on our player, you can see our player input. Open this up, open up events, and then open up player. Now you can see our move function, our jump function, and we've got one for hold. So let's add to our hold list and then drag in our load canvas into this slot from the hierarchy into here. Then in the drop down, go to hold to load level and select on hold. Cool. Now let's click on our load canvas and on here we need to drag in our fill circle. So that's our load circle into this slot. Click on our load circle. And so we don't have this ball on our head by default, we'll set our fill amount to zero and then press play. Now when we hold down E, you can see this fills up. So once this is filled, we can make our level load. You can use this method in other cases, like charging a weapon or interacting with an object. But for now, let's load our levels. Let's go back to our hold to load level script. And in here, we're going to add a public static event action, add using system. I'm going to call this on hold complete. Now, if we copy this and where we want to load our next level, we're going to go on hold complete dot invoke as we're not going to handle the loading the next level. We'll leave that to the game controller. After we invoke this, we also want to reset our hold. Cool. So now back in Unity, we're going to go to our game controller and open this up. And here we're already subscribing to our gem event underneath. I'm going to subscribe to our hold to load level dot on hold complete. 
I'm gonna go plus equals load next level, which we haven't written yet. So I'm gonna copy this and go void load next level. Oh, and I always do that. Don't need the brackets on the end when we're subscribing. Now I'm gonna do some setup back in Unity again before we get to some more complicated code. So this is how we're gonna load our levels. Currently, I have a grid of one level. Inside this, we have our ground and our wall. What I'm gonna do is name this level one. I'm gonna right click and go create empty and call this levels and drag level one inside levels. Then I'm gonna right click on level one and click duplicate. I'm gonna rename this level two. But now I'm gonna click on level one and in the inspector, there's a little tick next to the name box. If you tick on that, it'll disable level one. And we'll click on level two and we'll design a new level. Do you remember you can go to window, 2D, tile palette, and we can simply take the eraser and delete our platforms. Make sure you're on the right tile map when you're redoing this. Now I'll quickly make a new tile map. Cool, okay, now we got level two. So you might've guessed it, but basically what we're gonna do is deactivate one tile map and enable the other. Real simple method. Not everything has to be difficult. So we're gonna handle this in our game controller script. So let's open that back up. And at the top, we're gonna want a few new variables. So we're gonna want our public game object for our player, a public game object for our load canvas, a public list of game objects. We'll call this our levels. And then a private int, and we'll call this our current level index. Set that to a default of zero. Now we passed in our load canvas here so that when our progress is at 100, we'll set our load canvas, so load canvas dot set active to be true. We're gonna have this set to false by default. In case you forget, you can put this set to false up in the start. So we make sure that's always turned off. So now down in our load next level, we're gonna go int next level index and it's gonna equal, I'm gonna put this in brackets, our current level index equals equals our levels dot count minus one. Then outside the brackets, type question mark zero colon current level index plus one. Okay, so what this does, in case you've never seen this before, it's basically a one line if statement. So we're saying if our current level index is equal to the amount of levels we have minus one. So are we on our final level? Because indexes start at zero. Ours would be zero, then one. So zero for level one, one for level two, because programming is cool. <laughs> so basically when we hit level two and we want to load our next level, if there are no more levels, we're going to set it back to zero. So back to level one. Else we're going to take our current level index and add one to move to the next level. And then I'm going to set load canvas, set active to false. So we can no longer hold down to load. Cool, now we're going to disable our current level and enable the next one. So we're going to go levels, current level index, dot game object, dot set active to false. Then we'll go levels, next level index, dot game object, dot set active to true. Now when our new level loads in, we're going to want to set our player, dot transform, dot position back to the center of the screen. For me, that would be a new vector free, zero, 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 since that's my player's starting position. Then we'll set our current level index to be our next level index, our progress amount to be zero, and our progress slider dot value to be zero as well. Cool, and that should be it. Back in Unity, we can select our game controller, drag in our player, drag in our load canvas, and then in our levels, we'll drag in level one and then level two. If you open this up, you can see these have been added in order. I'm going to disable level two and enable level one and disable our load canvas and then press play. So now if we collect enough for our slider to be full, you can hold down E and we're in our next level. Level two, baby. Now our slide is set back to zero, so I'll have to collect more items to get to the next level again. Or defeat enemies, ooh. What's coming next, I wonder? <laughs> In our next video, we're gonna be adding enemies. I'm gonna do my best to add some simple enemy AI to get our enemies jumping around on these platforms and chasing our player. But cool, that's it for now. See you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and I got a new mic, does it sound good? Bye.